the hearing ear. John 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. Let's start from my sheep. They hear my voice. Now, when I hear your voice, is it not supposed to be, I know you? But now he's saying, my sheep hear my voice, but it's I that know them. They are hearing my voice, but it's not them that is recognizing me for hearing my voice. It's me that is recognizing them for them hearing my voice. Two things here. Number one, there is a possibility of a sheep not hearing the voice of God. Because it's only when you hear, a sheep hear the voice. Praise the Lord. It's only when you hear his voice that he will know you. Not that you know him. So there are people that say, Lord, I know you. But God is saying, see the problem now is me knowing you. Not you knowing what? Me. So he said in the end time, they will come and say, Lord, Lord, Lord. So they know God. But God does not what? Does not know them. For them calling him Lord, it means they have a kind of relationship with him. But because they cannot hear him, they don't know him. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. It is because you can hear the voice of God that you can follow him. What I want to teach today is a very, very deep teaching, but I'm going to cut it by God's grace in 15 minutes. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. When it comes to the spiritual senses that man has, the one that has been emphasized the most important is the hearing ear. I know many of us believe it's the seen eyes. But the most emphasized one that Jesus emphasized more than any other one is the hearing ear. If the rapture happens today, how will we know? The Bible says what will happen? A trumpet will what? In he who hears... Not, you can see Jesus in the sky, but if you didn't hear him, you are not going. They hear me. That is how I know them. Not that they record, I hear them, they hear me, then they know me. No, they hear me, so I know them. That the fact you can hear God is what can actually, that brings you in direct connection with God. The hearing ear is one of the most powerful among all the senses. When you check the Bible, you will see that every other sense can be deceived. There's only one that cannot be deceived. The hear. <laughs> ah, I don't know if I have time to open scriptures. But let me just talk about some of the stories that we hear so that we'll be able to identify with some of them. An example is Esau and his son. Isaac said, Esau, go and prepare something for me. And come. Then the mother did heard it and she went into the kitchen, prepared it, and then put a animal skin on on uh, on Jacob, wore him Esau's cloth, so he smelled like Esau. That's why they wore him in the cloth. They made him feel like Esau. Now remember that the father did not have sight, so he couldn't see Esau. He touched Esau's body and said, This body feels like my son he smelled his son and said this smell smell like my son but you know that the only thing that could not be deceived was what the voice if he had followed the voice he would not have missed one of the things that happened is that many people follow side that's why jesus did not say we are actually faith comment by sin he said faith comment by what yeah. mm. See, that hearing is the most accurate perimeter that you can use to judge whether this thing you are doing is correct or not. Hearing is the accurate, the most accurate way. Do you know why? Number one, 
all of us have a distinct voice. Number one, all of us have what? A distinct voice. So my voice is different from your voice. Your voice is different from your... No matter I try to pretend, I cannot change my voice. Number two is that all of us have a distinct sound. Have you ever known that someone is coming because of the way they walk without seeing them? Or is it only me? That I hear somebody coming from afar and I say it's only this person that walks like that. <laughs> because all of us have a distinct word, sound. We make distinct sounds. Even when we talk, we come to the point where even though we are saying the same thing, our nature has actually classified that same sound and, and morphed it into a different sound. Praise the Lord. So, sound is the one thing that everybody is trying to deceive, but they cannot deceive. Let me show you a scripture. Revelation 13. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Revelation 13. I crown that scripture. Verse. Revelation 13. And I saw a lamp come out of the sea. Let me search it. Revelation 13. The scripture is written here, but it's wrong. Thirteen, eleven. Okay, thought it was one. It's eleven. He said, "I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke as a dragon." So, if you look at him, you will see the horns. You know what horns mean? Horns mean authority. He looked like Jesus. He sound like Jesus. He looked like Jesus. He he he, he dressed in like Jesus. He deceived people, but when he spoke. That is the only time you will know that this person is not a lamb, but a what? A dragon. Satan can deceive in many ways, but there's one thing he cannot deceive. He said you are of your father the devil because you are speaking lies like your father who? The devil. He, that's one thing. Satan cannot betray his own, his own tongue. So if we train our ears, we become very dangerous. In the book of Revelation, Jesus did not emphasize sight. He said, let he who has an ear hear. Not let he who has eyes see. No. He who has an ear, let him what? Hear. Because he knows that it's only the ear that cannot be deceived. So what that means is that many of us, we have this ear, but we are not using it. That's why we have been falling into different errors. Falling into different errors. Because Satan will come to you with different things. But if you are, your ear is not working, you will not be able to know which one is God and which one is not God. The ear is one of the senses that is very difficult, if not impossible, to deceive. If you work on your spiritual hearing, nobody can deceive you. Nobody can deceive you. What does it mean to hear? It took me a while to come up with these definitions. The dictionary defined it as gaining knowledge through your, this, this sense organ called your ears. You gain knowledge. You gain knowledge. So the sound that you are, you are hearing is giving you what? Knowledge. But to hear spiritually is beyond sound. So hear spiritually means to understand or identify with something. Let me give you an example of, understand, of hearing spiritually. If I say, I draw maybe, or let's say you, you had a dream, and you saw... You saw a chicken crowing. And then you saw somebody doing like this. In the dream. What would you think it means? Warning. warning. Abby, you think it means warning. Now, if you hear that thing spiritually, you will follow that warning. But if you did not hear it, you will not take it into account. I you see what hearing is? Hearing is not that you heard something. Hearing is that it has entered you and you are willing to do it. 
you have added that information to what you are considering about what life. That is why when it comes to hearing, God does not count that I told you as meaning you heard. So God can tell you the same thing a thousand times. The day you heard is the day that you have taken that information to heart to do it. Am I making sense? So a lot of times, what we think we are hearing is just noise entering our ear, but we have not actually what? Heard God. Some of us have not heard God for years. We have heard many noise, but we have not heard God. Because that thing he has been saying, we have not put it in our heart. Because the Bible says, if you listen and put it in your heart, that is what you will walk by. Am I making sense? So spiritual hearing is not gaining by your spiritual ears necessarily. In that, in that sense, is that you have comprehended what God has said. What I, let me put it this way. In the spirit, you can hear with your eyes. You can hear with your feeling. You can hear with any organ of, of, your, of your spiritual sense. As long as that thing evolves to comprehension. Praise the Lord. What it means to, for example, to see in the spirit is to have a revelation. But to have a revelation is different from hearing to understand. You see what I'm saying now? So, eyes in the spirit is not the same thing when we say eyes in the physical. Some of us are saying, oh Lord, give me spiritual eyes to see. God has given you spiritual eyes, but because your spiritual ear is not working, what you are seeing doesn't make any sense. I, am I making sense? What you are seeing now, so you saw a vision of, of a cat jumping over, it, that is revelation. But unless you have spiritual ears, you will not hear what God has said. Because God has said something through that thing that he showed you. But you didn't hear it. Why? Because your spiritual hearing is what? Dull. So what Jesus was saying when he says their, their heart is dull, their ears are dull, their eyes are dull, he wasn't talking about just hearing things or seeing visions. It was deeper than that. Praise the Lord. So when it comes to hearing, it means comprehending what a spirit has given to you. Putting it in your heart and walking by it. That is, means you have heard it. Now in the spirit, sound is such a powerful force. Because everything, remember I've already given one of the mysteries of sound, that everyone has a sound. Every single one of us have what? Is sound. But let me give some other mysteries of sound. Number one is that there is no creation without sound. Everything we are doing, there's a sound attached to it. Everything you are doing, there's a sound. Whether you want to make a, 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 a container, you must hit a hammer to something and a sound must be made. Is that true or not? Whatever you do, there must be a sound. If there is no sound, there is no creation. Number two is that there is no movement without sound. This is why I'm listening to some of these things so that when I say this is how we get our spiritual hearing, we will take it very agile. There is no movement. If you are going to move forward, the sound must be made. If you are moving backward, the sound must be made. The Bible said there is no sound or no noise that doesn't have a meaning. You know, all of us think, some people think that sound does not have a meaning. The Bible says, Every sound has a meaning. When you hear noise, noise is not meaningless. Noise means something that is not arranged in proper order. But it still means something. A man in China can say the same letters of the same word that you want to speak and speak it in English. If we mix it together, it's the same thing. Is that true or not? That's it. So when it comes to, to noise, all of us are involved in this. If you don't have a spiritual sound, you can't move forward. That is why anytime you saw revival in the Bible, what was the first thing that you heard? A sound. A sound is going to come from heaven. Men are going to be praying. A sound must come before, before people will move forward. That's why sometimes when God wants to give you victory, He starts giving you a particular song in your heart. If you don't sing that song, you are not participating in the victory that wants to come from heaven. That's why anytime you see heaven come down, He said they were all in one accord one accord is not only talking of the earthly people it means that heaven is making the sound now and you join to heaven so you agree with heaven so what is in heaven can manifest on earth if you don't follow sound you don't walk with sound there's no moving forward 
Number three, or let me, is that every era has a sound. Every time period has a sound. In the 80s, the music they were singing is different from the music that they sang in the 90s. Is that true or not? It's different from the music they sang in 2010. Is that true or not? It's different from the music they are singing now. Do you think there is people that is just changing music? No, there is a sound for now. So people that say, let us go back. You are, you are missing what God is doing now. That's why you want to go back. Solomon said that is a foolish talk, saying to go back. He said, why is the past better than present? He said, that's a foolish talk. You don't know what the Lord is doing. Every time has a sound. The problem is that you are not plugging into that sound. That's why you are not relevant in the now. God is saying something for now, not what he has said. Praise the Lord. If your spiritual ear can apprehend that sound, he's saying now, you will be part of the project he's doing now. But many of us are not part of the project because he has shifted the sound. But we are still in the 90s sound. That sound that he gave, we still like that sound. You will not move in today. Some people, they say, I'm uh, operating the 1978 model of themselves. They are operating the 2000 model of themselves. God has moved. You say, I like that 1998 Mercedes-Benz. It's too fine. Mercedes-Benz, uh, the, the gear shift can no longer move well. God has changed it that the car cannot move by itself. You don't need to worry. But because you refuse to flow with the sound, you are not moving with God. Every church has a sound. <laughs> What I found out is that every ministry has a sound. If you don't know the sound of your ministry, the people that are sent to your ministry will not recognize you. Mm, Jesus said, they hear my voice, Abi, and I know them. Not that they know me, but I what? I know them. In the ministry, is different. They are looking for a sound. That is why they gravitate to one man. That man is not preaching what is different from another man. That man went to get a sound in his spirit. So when he's talking, is that sound you are hearing? That is why even if they give all the ministry in the whole world the same instrument, is that not the same instrument everybody has? But if you enter Mountain of Fire, you will hear the sound is different. If you enter Redeem, you will hear the music is different. Is that true or not? If you enter another, you will hear the sound is what? That is how it is. If you don't know the sound of you, the people will come and hear and say, this is not what I heard in the spirit. And they will walk away. Because every ear is opening, looking for that place that, that is calling to them. Deep does what? Call it. Call it. Your calling is with a sound. If you don't know the sound, your calling can't be fulfilled. If you don't know that sound, that calling that he has given you, you can't fulfill it. There's a sound that follows your calling. Deep call it unto deep. He has called you from darkness. The reason why you became born again is because you heard the sound of God. It's because you heard God when he called you and said, come, and you followed him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another thing about sound is that sound is a transport system. If God has placed some things, there are some things that God hid in sound. God wants to give you prosperity and then he will give you a sound. And say, sing this song. As you are singing this song, prosperity will be coming. When you check the children of Israel, there was a place where they wanted a well to spring forth and they started to sing and water were coming out. Say, spring forth, O well. Allah bakariya santa. There is a sound for all these things. It is a transport system. When John wanted to enter the spirit realm, what did he hear? He heard the sound of, a, of one's voice that's like a trumpet. The trumpet sucked him into the spirit realm. If you don't know how to manage sound, how to hear the right sound, tune your ear well, there are sound, God will be giving you all the information you need, but you might not enter. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Why should we develop our hearing ears? I only give two or three. Number one, faith cometh by hearing. The Bible says anything not done in faith is sin. That means if you are not hearing God, you are already sentenced to a life of sin. <laughs> if you are not hearing God, you are what? You are already sentenced to a life of sin. 
The only way you can receive the power that God has placed is if you can hear him. Not see his miracles, not even see him. But if you can what? Hear him. Remember hearing is not to say God spoke and he said something. Hearing is that that thing he spoke is inside your heart. You have heard it. The reason why there is no faith is that people have not heard God. They have heard a prophet. They have even heard their Bible, but they have not heard God. So they will read the Bible and say, By stripes I'm healed. And they think that they have heard God. See, if you have heard God, as you said that scripture to manifest instantly, you will not need to do it two times. The voice of God, what happened when creation heard, let there be light? The creation resist. The creation said, let me believe that God said it. No. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. So Satan disconnect our ear. He said you can see, but don't, but don't hear. So he can give you all the visions, but none of them you understand. So what is the point of the vision? He can give you anything, but he will not allow you to enter it. So what is the point of all those things? If you don't have the hearing ear to hear God, you are in trouble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, I've already said a bit of it, is that our calling is activated when you hear God. The power of God is activated when you hear Him. That's why somebody can, God can tell somebody, tell that cripple to rise up. Now, I know you, you will say, I heard something. But unless that thing enter your heart to do it, you have not heard God yet. So some people have listened or have perceived that God said something, but they have not heard him. Because if you hear him, faith will what? It will come. Praise the Lord. If you hear him, you will not doubt what he said. The reason you are doubting is because you have not what? Heard him. This is why the voice of God is one of the most valuable treasures. God doesn't speak anyhow. People just say, God speak, God speak. They, do they know what mean God speak? <coughs> Many of the things that people say God speak is just that they are, they are tapping into the spirit realm and they are receiving news. Because anything that is going to happen is already in the spirit realm. So you can tap into the spirit realm and receive news. But that doesn't mean that you have heard God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why must we develop our hearing? If you follow anything other than God's voice, you will be lost. Any other thing. I'm talking, you can even follow the Bible. Did you, did you read what, what we read last week, 2 Corinthians? People were reading the Bible and instead of finding Jesus, they were getting lost and lost and lost. It is the voice of God from the Bible that will take you to where Jesus is. So some people have used the same Bible that people have used to find Christ. And it's the same reason they went to form another sect. It's the same reason they went to call themselves Jesus. It's the same reason they are using to commit fornication. Because why? They are not hearing God. They are seeing something, you no. Know? No doubt that they are seeing something. They are hearing another voice. But because that voice sounds like a voice of care, a voice of, of, of love, they think that that is the voice of God. That's why this devil has always been deceiving men. He has been telling them, God is not anger. God is not this. But Jesus God said, me. Me, I am a jealous God. He has tried to confuse their hearing so that when they hear God, they will be confused by it. We must develop our hearing ears because hearing is the highest form of discernment in the spirit. If you can develop your ears, Satan will not speak. Satan can speak through Peter, and Jesus could know. Satan can speak to another to something and, and you will know that is Satan speaking. If you don't have the hearing ear, you will not recognize his voice. But Jesus could not be deceived. Praise the Lord. That's what happened. That lady was prophesying. Hey, these are the men sent from God to give us the way, to show us the way. But Paul said, I am grieved in my spirit. Because he heard God's voice. And this one doesn't sound like the voice of God. Even though it's correct. It doesn't sound like the voice of God. How do I develop my hearing ears? Number one, spend time with God. The truth is that you don't actually need to hear any other thing if you have heard God. If 
you have heard God, you will not need to hear news. <laughs> if you hear news or listen to news, it will just be for confirmation or I don't even know because there's no need for confirmation if you hear God. If you spend time with God, you will realize that everything around the whole world listens to the voice of God. When you spend time with God and you start to recognize his voice, you are already a strong man. Nobody can know the voice of a person that you have not spent time with. That's why a husband and a wife, even if you twist your voice, the wife will know that it's your voice. Is that not true? That's it. Spend time with God. You want to develop your hearing ears, spend time with God. Number two, live a life of obedience. Why Elijah was able to know that God was not in the fire, God was because he was constantly obedient to the voice of God. So obedient that he knows when this one is God, even though it's spectacular, he knows that this is not God. It's the little things. It's the little things. Spend time in obedience. Number three, exercise your spiritual hearing. The Bible says it is only those that have exercised the spiritual hearing that are mature. What do I mean by exercise? Strive to hear from God. That's what I mean by exercise. When you are praying, don't pray and only talk to God and walk away. When you pray, strive that God also talk back to what? To you. And you heard him. And you can know that you heard him. <laughs> Number four. How to develop your spiritual hearing. Walk by faith. If God has spoken to you and you know that it's God. Don't be doing, uh, let me see ten visions first. Let me see 15 vision. What you are doing is that you are blunting that ear. You are bl- there are many times God will send you to missions that will fail. What did he do to Jonah? Go and tell them that the place is destroyed. If you were Jonah, if you were looking from the outside, wouldn't you say Jonah is a fake prophet? Jonah, you prophesied on TV that Nineveh will be destroyed. Nineveh is still standing. Wouldn't you say that Jonah is a fake prophet? Ah. But Jonah knew the voice of God. He knew that we walk by faith, not by sight. If I've heard God, whether it happened or not today, I have heard God. God will give you access to his voice when he knows you can trust him. When he knows you can trust him, that's what happened to Abraham. Abraham told people that I'm living, I'm going to be a father of nations. <laughs> they will say, see this man. You are 75 years. Father of which nations? <laughs> Carry your bag and be going. And for 25 years, he kept prophesying the same thing. If you are not ready to walk by faith, you can't hear God. Jonah, uh, Noah, preached the message of repentance for 100 years. There was no single rain. For 100 years, Jonah was saying, People, rain will fall. How many people would have said, jo- Noah, you know, go tired for this, your talk, where they talk. You know, go keep quiet. You don't, they talk this thing for 100 years. But when you hear God, you will know that it surely it will what? Hey. If you can follow God without the expectation that there must be instant result, there must be instant result. You, you might be one of the people that God will start talking to. He will start to tell you some things that might come after you are after you have gone. All the things that Isaiah, Jeremiah, the prophets, how many of them came to pass in their lifetime? Very few. If you must walk and start hearing God, you must learn to walk with Him by faith. So He can give you a word and say, I will make you a president. And at that time, you are in the donkey. You are in the prison. And you are saying, how is it possible to be a president? You have not, heard, you have not ready to hear God yet. Because immediately you hear Him, faith will be activated. Immediately faith is activated. That thing that He has said will come to pass. So the Bible says, the word of the Lord tried just Joseph inside the prison. Joseph did not doubt one day that that thing will come to pass. So when he was going out, he told that man, remember me when you are what? When you are going out. If you must walk with God and start to hear His voice, you must make up your mind to trust Him, whatever He says. If He said, today there will be no sun. It doesn't make any sense to you, Abby. But because you know that it's God, you can come out and say, today there will be no sun. And even though sun shine, even though sun shine, that will not change the conviction that you have that you have heard God. If you are ready to walk with God like that, a time will come. 
when you speak one nobody will doubt it because god will honor you but god is using those things to test you first he's watching you can you trust me even though there's no manifestation can you trust me even though what you said yesterday didn't come to pass i am the one that told you to say it but it didn't come to pass can you still trust me if you can trust him he will give you access to his voice may the lord bless the teaching of his word in jesus name Thank you. 